that Radhika, Srimati Radhika, highest lover of Krishna. But she is telling, Na prema gandho si darapi me harau, karandami sa bhagya bharam prakasi. Bansi bilasyanan ava lokanam bina, sifatma jat pranam patanga pranam. Oh, all tell that, oh, you have so much affection for Krishna, but I have not a smell even of prema. If there was prem, that she says, when you will take them from a water, at once they will give up their life. And is she alive? Krishna is very far away, Dwarka and here and here. And still alive. So, Narottam Thakur is also telling like that. He is Siddha Bhakta. Not ordinary bhakti, but he is telling. He is imitating? No, not imitating. Really he is. It comes from his core of heart. Hari Hari, Ifale, You know that he was always engaged in Krishna service, Kirtan and doing. Even Nityananda Prabhu, Gaur and his parikar used to come on his kirtan and began to dance. And he is telling, Bifale Janamam. What did we do? We don't lament. Never lament. We, Gurudev gets the seed of bhakti and it was a sprouting event and left totally immersed in sense gratification. Hi, hi, hi on me. Tifale Janama Gavaina. He is telling. Without any gain, I have in what? I waste my, my time. Oh, this name is Golok, from Golok coming. And it will fulfill our whole desire. What you will see? Even Krishna Prem, Gopi Prem, it will give. Yeah? But we are neglecting. You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, they came from Golok Vrindavan and to dispute this Harina Ratina Haila Kenotai. Gati Kavo, giving up, eh? bhajan and sadhan. Oh, oh, we are driving in the ocean of lust and not even any dhikka. Why? Coming. Same is coming. So we should think. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Nityananda Paru Haridas, go and dispute her in him. Don't want any bhikkha, only this. And thus they liberated Yagai Madhai, even she was beaten. But what to do? You should think, I have called you all to think over this matter and to be like that. Oh, you have enjoyed in your all life from beginning of creation. Beginning of creation. Don't involve in these things. Never be like Ram Chandra Khan, disciple of Srinivasacharya. How he left everything. He was he married and he was going in Palakvin. And Srinivas Acharya was sitting there and he went to do pranam and he told, Oh, you are coming to do pranam for being happy? Oh, without any fear, you have collected a nagin 
Snake. Poisonous snake. snake. And you are taking in his meal. And she will bite and you will die. Oh, at once she gave up. Told that, oh, oh, you should take this girl to his father. And he did not return back to his home. And he took Harinam and Diksha and everything from Srinivas Tachar. So she was so high class of Vaishnav that Narottam Thakur is praying to Srinivas Acharya. Oh, you are my friend. Please give the association also. All our kirtans I have collected from oh, high, high Vaishnav. Narottam Thakur, Lochan Das, Premananda Das, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and I have brought to you to sing and to realize. But you are neglecting, I am saying. You should always give very deep attention and try to realize and try to follow, not only singing. I don't want singing only. I don't want preaching only. Then it will be like karma, preaching. If himself practicing bhakti yoga and then preaching, then it will be bhakti. bhakti. Otherwise, no. Mm -hmm. I have come to tell you all. And you should try to follow. Don't delay. Vash. Oh, Namo Vishnu Pada. You. There's no need of harmonium. He will do so too. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Nami Bhakti Siddhanta Sarat 
Without invitation, he used to go to each door to door, especially those who were fallen, like Prachin Barha and others. Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Sarsati Goswami, he thought that if he will do like follow the character of Srila Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, being only in Braja, then how can we help others? Better not to be Goshtanandi, uh, Bhajananandi, but with Bhajananandi, Goshtanandi also. So first Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati in the line of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur started. He initiated so many very jewel boys, learned of high goal, and after that he gave them sannyas and told them, oh, you should preach Gaur Bani here and there. Follow yourself also. You should read Jaiva Dharma Bhakti Rasami Sindhu Ujjalin Mani, the books of Sanatana Goswami, Vishwanath Chakvati, Thakur Rupa Goswami, and others. 
be qualified that you can oh, give the answer and remove the doubts of people in this world and send them to soul. <laughs> Don't take heavy amount of money from them, only one paisa, two paisa, only this. And they began to preach. My Gurudev came and he was given a box that and he was the son of a very high class yeah, Jamindar lion lord and told that you should go door to door and he used to go door to door in the morning only taking some uh, and then going whole day in very hot summer day and collecting one paisa and telling why we are taking and then all our Gaurvani, they used to tell them. And very soon result came, high class of learned persons, doctor, engineers, hmm, all began to come and join. Hmm? Oh, this Abhacharan Prabhu, he was also in that trap of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. <laughs> Siddhanta Sati trap. He came. And then he became penniless. Right here and there. And then how, anyhow, our Guru Maharaj possibly told, you must take sannyas. And he took and after that he preached everywhere. In couple years, hmm, he traveled everywhere, established centers and published so many translation books, or thirty books, and that preached. That is why you are coming to Me, because I served Him, and He gave Me benediction. So you are coming to Me. So I have come to preach their mission. <laughs> so, I have come in Alachua, you know, that we started the glory of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from beginning. And so many things we discussed there. Ra Ramananda also was discussed there. So, I want that here we should start from Sanatana Goswami, his Siksha, and then Rup Siksha, and then if time we can discuss about the Rath Jatra. Rath Jatra is coming, and if he are not, Initially. then in Italy Rath Jatra option will be. Here we will be, and Rath Jatra day will also come. So, you know that Sirup Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Anupam Goswami, they came very rustical, high Brahman family. In their boyhood, they were very, very intelligent, over intelligent. Hmm? One day, the Muslim Hussain Shah Bhatsa, very powerful. He was on the tomb. And tomb was under construction. He told to Mistri, Mason, who oh, you are very high class of qualified Mason. You have made such a wonderful land making. He told Oh, Prabhu, I can make more better than this. Oh, you can make. Then after that you will make another place more better than this. And he took his sword and cut that you should not make better than this. And then one associate was standing of him and he told, Oh, go at once and bring. Go and cut. But what? to bring and 
whom to bring, where to go, he did not know. And he was at in angry mood, angry mood. So he came down and thinking, what should I take? Then he thought that if I will be here, then king will cut me also. So what to do? He left that city and went to another city. And there Rupa Sana, um, Sanatana Goswami as a Santosh and Rupa Goswami, Amar and Anupam, three brothers were there. One day Sanatana Goswami, Sajjan, uh, Santosh saw that a person very suffering and very sad his <coughs> But why he called that person and told, why you are so unhappy? Unhappy. What you are thinking? Oh, he told them, I am associate of Hussein Shah Barsa. And he told me to bring, but what? So I left of, out of fear that place and I have come here and wha what should I collect and I should take? Then Sanat Santosh told, at that time where was Hussain Sahabasa on the tomb? What was going there? Oh, it was under construction. And what became there? Oh. He killed that mission and told me, oh, go bring. Then he told that you should collect some high class of qualified missions and take them to king. And he did so. When he went to king, he told, oh, he began to laugh. Oh, how you brought? I, am, I forget to tell you because I was at that time very angry. Oh, then he told me. There are three boys, brothers, very intelligent. They saw me unhappy and called me and asked, why you are unhappy? I told, oh, you should collect very high class of mission and take it. So I had brought. Then he told, oh, you should go return back to the brothers and you should call three brothers. And when they came, he examined their knowledge and saw that they are very, very intelligent, more than me. They can control my whole kingdom. kingdom. So he made Sanat Santos uh, his prime minister and Amar private secretary and Anupam the head of the economic department. So the three brothers began to and change the name also. And also change. Sakar Malik, Dabir Khar, Anupam nothing. <laughs> and thus, after some time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came with his thousand and thousands of devotees and he was going to Vrindavan. There he was, Prime Minister Sanatana Goswami. He came in the night and he gave his nephew Jiva Goswami very small one in his lotus feet. And then he requested, Prabhu, you should not go Vrindavan like this. This is not proper. You should go only one or with any other person. Don't take anyone. Otherwise, this king was th thinking that you are coming with army and he would have attacked, but we have safety. So, otherwise, you can be like that. So, Mahaprabhu returned back. And then he went to Jagannath Puri, and from there, next year, he came to Vrindavan by Jhari Khan, very deep forest. So many elman, uh, elephants and tigers, tigers and bears and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and the elephant mad also, oh, they began to go, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Deers and tigers, 
Oh, both on a one place with friendship. And they became like this. Wonderful. And then he went to Vrindavan, but he could not stay there for a long time. Why? Because sometimes he used to become very um, overwhelmed by moods. When he used to go to Govardhan, Nandagam, Varshana, and he remembered all these things, Gopis and Nanda Baba, Jasoda, then it was chance that he may reveal that I am Krishna. That is very soon he returned back. In the, when he was returning, in Prayag he met Rupa Goswami and Anupam Goswami. And he gave ten days ocean of rush, but one, Mahaprabhu is telling him, I am giving you one drop. And then what is bhakti, what is bhakti rush, what is just thai bhav, what is anurag, ragatmik, raganuga, all these. In detail. Hmm? And what is Krishna Tattva? What is Radha Tattva? What is Prem Tattva? And all other things he gave. And he sent both to go Vrindavan. And from Vrindavan you should come to Puri. And in the way he was returning, he came to Varanasi. Sanatana Goswami, after meeting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he became totally detached from all things. He wanted to, re to give up the resignation from Prime Minister. Hmm? Rupa Goswami and Anup Anupam Goswami has left before. They had gone to meet Mahaprabhu. And he was waiting. <coughs> he left his job, sitting in the, his house. Oh. Discussing Srimad Bhagavatam and Hussain Shahbata came. I heard that you are ill and that is why you are not coming to um, office. You are my elder brother. I have given up everything over your head. But you are here sitting and discussing Srimad Bhagavat with a oh, very pundit. Other pundits, he told that, Prabhu, now I cannot do that job. Please take my resignation and you should engage another prime minister. Oh, there were so many persons, they wanted to be prime minister. <laughs> then he told that, I am going to Jagannath Puri to invite, invade, and you should come with me. He told that I cannot come. Then he gave him in prison and then Sanatan was in prison and he came alone with army. In the meantime, Sanatan Goswami told the jailer. Jailer was appointed by him. <laughs> so he told that I have appointed you, you know. Now you should Repay me something. I am giving this 5,000 golden coins to you and you should give up me. Oh, I cannot. Then he gave 10, 7, 7,000. And then he, oh, saliva coming down. Come. <laughs> and Sanatana Goswami, I will be Darvesh. Muslim sadhu, I will go to Makkah, I will not be here. You should tell that he was going to latrine and he jumped in the river anyhow we could not found him. He has died, you should tell. And when Hussein Sabata came, they told, and in the meantime with a servant, Hishan, and he left that place in the night, a oh, very, very deep forest. In the forest there were some dakais having one astrology. Astrologist. Astrologist told, oh, two persons are coming and they have seven, eight, 
eight golden coins. Oh, let them come. And then came, and one person of Dagaib came, and very politely and humbly he told that, Oh, now night you should spend there, and you should take rest, and we will provide you so delicious food and everything. Then he took them to their house, and there they thought that we will kill and take. That's eight golden coins. But Sanatana Goswami, very intelligent, why these persons without any gain are... Very uh, why they are expecting so much? So much. There must be something behind it. <laughs> and then he asked his tapan, Oh, have you something? Oh, I have something. Why? To say, serve you, give me. Then he kept one and gave seven. Then he gave it to Dakai Sarvar and he became happy. Oh, oh, you have saved me. Today I would have killed you and taken. But you should know that one coin is even with your servant. And then he again went to that servant and told, have you something more? I told, one coin, give me. Now, you should take it and return back to home. Don't come with me. This is like a jam. Jam means day. You should return. If you want to do bhajan, I'm telling for this, not a his story, that if you want to do bhajan, give up everything. Sanatan has gave everything. Not a single pie he kept for him. Especially sannyasi should be like that. Nothing. Hmm. That our attachment should be given to them, that thing. Don't. <coughs> and thus Sanatam Goswami came to Varanasi in a Muslim base, in the way his sister's husband Sri Kant was there to buy horses for Hussain Singh Balsa. He saw, oh, <coughs> oh, Sanatana Prabhu is coming. And he came from Dhum and went where Sanatana Goswami was there. And he saw that, oh, he is like a beggar. And he began to be. And anyhow he told that I will give you some money. He told, don't give, I don't like, I have everything. Then he, anyhow, he requested and gave a boat kambal. Blanket. Blanket. Very precious. And then he took and came in Varanasi. Anyhow, he knew by anyone that a sannyasi has come, he is always singing, doing kirtan of Krishna. So in this way he knew, and he went there, Chandrasekhar Bhavan, where Mahaprabhu was. And Chandrasekhar. Tapan Mishra. No, no. Tapan Mishra, you to go to take prasadam, and you to live in Chandrasekhar house. So she was there. Mahaprabhu told, O oh Chandrasekhar, Go and bring a high class of devotee has come here to meet me. Bring him. He went there. I saw no Vaishnav, Tulsi Mala and other things, Tilak, nothing. He served it a Muslim. He returned back, told the Prabhu, here is no, there is no any high class of devotee. Then... Anybody is there? Anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, bring him. Call him. And then Mahaprabhu entered, Mahaprabhu saw, and at once he ran, and, and he was telling, weeping, I'm Muslim now, don't you touch don't touch me, God. don't touch me. Oh, I'm, nothing, I'm not touching, I'm touching you to be purify myself. And then, anyhow, he was there, then Mahaprabhu told, oh, take him to Ganges. 
and he should take bath and remove his and shave and be like a gentleman and a Vaishnava. And then he returned back and took, and he said, and oh, everything. But he was looking after him. He thought, that, why he is looking after me? Then saw that, oh, I have that boat kambal, very costly. But Mahaprabhu did not like. Then at once he returned back and he saw that any Bengali sadhu, oh, he has a one torn like a quill, and told that, can you give me and take my, oh, you are joking, joking with me, you yeah, are joking not, you should take, and took his, Mahaprabhu Shan became very happy. Oh, this is the symptom to be a Vaishnava. Nishkin Chanasya Bhagavat Mane. And then he was there. There Mahaprabhu told, Oh, Krishna is very merciful. He had taken you from Dark well, stool well. He told, I don't know Krishna who is, but I know you only. By your mercy I have left all these things and cup. And after that, Sanatan Goswami, with a request, very, very humble way, he asked, Hey, Ami, Nahi Jani. In before he inspired um, Raya Ramananda gave inspiration in him and again he asked himself and by his inspiration he was answering. Raraman told, I don't know what you are asking. I am like a soup, soup pakshi, pharaoh. What you are inspiring me, I am telling. And then he knew everything and then he became jewel of them, ocean of jewels. Now here, the question are coming from where? No. From Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is inspiring to ask such questions. Sanatana Goswami, you to know that I am this buddy Sanatana Goswami. What is the need of asking? But he asked for whole world, for us. And then? You. Begin. You can come aside here towards the Oh, book always. <laughs> Without book, you cannot. Hmm. He was doing kirtan but looking book. Without book, they cannot walk. <laughs> Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Vancha Kalpadaru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Vyanamo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram First of all I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams, my Shraddha Pushpanjali to the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata Shri Shila, 
Asi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada. And secondly, my equal Dandavat Pranams, my Shraddha Pushpanjali. To the lotus feet of my beloved Siksha Gurudevs, Nityalila Pravishtom, Vishnu Pad, Sri Srila Bhakti Raksha, Sri Dharago Swami Maharaj. And Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata Sri Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, our beloved Srila Gurudev. Also, my Dandavat Pranams to all my Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and to six Goswamis headed by Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatan Goswami Pad and to all the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, friends and guests who have come to this auspicious Harikata festival assembly in the presence of our beloved Gurudev. So this subject matter of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, the conversation which took place between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Sanatan Goswami is called Sanatan Siksha. The instructions given by the Supreme Lord Himself to His unalloyed pure devotee, Sri Sanatan Goswami. But as Srila Gurudev just pointed out, Actually, Srila Sanatana Goswami, he already understood all transcendental knowledge and truth. But Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu wanted to speak this divine knowledge so that it could be disseminated within this world. And he chose his own personal associate to be like the student. And he inspired within his heart uh, that he should ask particular questions which would enable Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to now speak all of these subject matters to give the proper education to all the fallen conditioned souls in this material world that they can receive knowledge, divine spiritual knowledge by which they can be uh, elevated and become purified from the material illusory energy of Krishna and come to understand who is Krishna, Krishna Tattva, who is the Supreme Absolute Truth, and what are His energies, and what is Bhakti, what is the divine relationship between the Jiva and the Supreme Lord. So in this way, the conversation began as Srila Sanatana Goswami, very humbly, he fell at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with a blade of grass between his teeth, as a sign of deep, deep humility. This is the quality of a pure Vaishnava. He has no false ego, no false pride. He doesn't identify himself at all uh, with this temporary illusory world. So he is in pure state of consciousness. And Srila Sanatana Goswami came in such a humble manner. And then he presented to Goranga Mahaprabhu this que these questions. He said, K Ami, who am I? And also he asked him, Why? Kene uh, Amare Tapatroi. Jare Tapatroi. Tapatroi means the threefold miseries that are experienced by every single living entity in this material world. It is called Tapatroi. He was asking, why am I always being given so many sufferings? Why am I here, suffering in this world? Who am I? What is my real identity? And why am I here in this world suffering? These are very basic, fundamental questions that every single living being who attains the human form of life should ask themselves. If they are not asking these two questions, then actually they have not yet qualified themselves as uh, genuine human beings. They are actually still on the level of animals. Why? Because in the material world, uh, the animals are eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Human beings, they also do the same four activities. But what uh, is the difference between them? Human being has higher intelligence. What is this intelligence? For? What is the purpose of it? Just to learn how to eat better, to sleep better, to mate better? Currently, in modern civilization, 
This is what is going on. The human society is advancing with technology and so much science to do what? Simply to eat and sleep better, to enjoy the material energy and to enjoy sense gratifications. But this is not the purpose of human life. purpose of human life is to inquire about the Absolute Truth. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. This is the beginning of Vedic knowledge, where the living entity begins to ask these fundamental questions and to seek out the Absolute answers to these questions. So Sanatana Goswami, he asked, Ke Ami, who actually am I? And why am I always suffering in this material world from three types of miseries? He said, if I don't know the answer to these questions, how can I be benefited actually? How can I really attain uh, my own real benefit? So, this material world is a place of suffering. Anyone who thinks that the material world is actually meant for enjoyment is to be considered a mad person. Why? Because enjoyment here is very, very minimal, but suffering is very much. Hmm? Just like, for example, our material body. Uh, this is one type of material misery of the three types of miseries. We all have this material body. So many pains, so many sufferings are experienced by this material body. For example, we have our little toe on our foot. And how much pleasure can we gain from our little toe? But how much pain can we gain from it? We've all experienced. So therefore, this material body, it is constructed in such a way that actually it will simply supply endless amounts of suffering. Huh? And also our mind, our subtle body that we have. We have actually two bodies given to us in this material world. The gross physical body made of the material elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And then we have also a subtle body made out of uh, mind, intelligence, and ahankar, false ego. So this, uh, these two coverings, like a coat and a shirt, uh, so we are all covered by this physical material body and the subtle body of our mind also experiences so much suffering. We experience so many worries, so many anxieties, so many embarrassments. So in this way, this is only one type of suffering. Uh, it is called adhyatmic, the suffering that comes from our own atma. Atma means this self, or the self of the external body and mind. Then there is adibodic. Adibodic misery means other living beings in this world, either in the species of humans or in other species like animals, insects, even microbe germs. They are inflicting so much suffering and misery upon us also. I don't think there is anyone sitting here who has not had misery and suffering caused to them by another human being in this life. So, in this way, we constantly undergo the sufferings caused by other living entities. And then the third type of misery is Adidaivik. Adidaivik means miseries caused by the demigods. That means this material nature, which has all the elements of nature, the weather conditions, the sun, the wind, and so forth, too much rain, too little rain, too hot, too cold, earthquakes, yes, earthquake like in China, and so many floods and hurricanes like this. The material nature is constantly causing suffering. So an intelligent person asks the question, Why? Why am I suffering? I didn't ask for this. Huh? Nobody requested from me. Do you want to suffer? Here, we'll give you this situation in this world. Now you can suffer. The question should be, Why? Why am I currently now suffering in this world? I don't want suffering. And who actually am I? Am I just this temporary physical body made out of skin, bones, blood, flesh, stools and urine and other abominable substances? Just a bag filled with these things? Is that what I am? And at the time when this body becomes finished, am I also finished? So this basic, fundamental question, 
was asked by Sanatan Goswami, Who am I? This is the beginning of human life. To understand what is our actual identity. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he heard these questions from Sanatan Goswami. He told Sanatan Goswami, actually, I know that you are really a, a transcendental personality and you already know uh, the answer to this. But it is the quality of the great souls, the great spiritual personalities, that they ask such kind of questions to benefit others. Also, you should see that. <laughs> so then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, now he began to answer the questions of Srila Sanatana Goswami. And first of all, he answered this question, Who am I? He said, Jivair Sarup Hoi, Krishner Nityadas, Krishner Tatasta Shakti, Pena Ved Prakash. So this is a very, very famous quotation. It is like the fundamental basis of our Vaishnava philosophy. Jivair Sarup Hoi, Krishner Nityadas. What is the eternal Swarup? Swarup means my, my own form. Now, as we just said, we have this temporary physical body. But is this our own form? No. Because this form will drop in just a few years and it will merge back into the earth. Then what happens to me? What actually am I? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately went directly to answer this question. Jivar Surupoi Krishna Nityadas. He identified what is all of our real identity. And what is that? We are the eternal servant of Krishna. Every single living entity in this material world, whether they are in the human form, whether they are in the plants, the animals, the insects, the aquatics, 8,400,000 species of life throughout this universe, in whatever form they are, actually, they, are not, they have only one identity. They are the eternal Nitya Krishna Das, eternal servant of Krishna. Servant of God. Because, Jivara uh, Tatasta Shakti Beda Beda Prakash. Because, who is the Jiva soul? We are the living entity that is inhabiting this physical body. We are the conscious uh, unit of eternal consciousness called Chit Kanu, uh, a tiny, tiny atomic particle of consciousness. And that consciousness, Sri Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, Apareya mitastvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhuta mahabaho yayedam daryate jagat. He says, actually, this material nature of mine it is my inferior energy, earth, water, fire, etc. But he says, besides this temporary material inferior energy, there is another energy in this world. And Krishna says, uh, prakriti viti me param. It is my superior potency. That is jiva bhuta, the living being, the conscious entity. And that living being is my energy. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said here, Krishna Tatasta Shakti. What kind of energy is it of Krishna's? It is his marginal potency. Each one of us is the eternal energy of God. Now Mahaprabhu began to describe that the Sri Krishna has three primary potencies. His energies are actually infinite and unlimited, but amongst his energies, three are prominent. One is his parashakti, uh, his superior potency. Vishnu shakti para prokta, uh, chetasyapya tata para, avidya karma sangyanya, tatiya shaktir ishyate. So actually, Sri Krishna, he has his parashakti, his superior potency. And what is that? That is the eternal spiritual realm, the spiritual world beyond this temporary material universe. This universe is made out of his inferior Maya Shakti potency, which is illusory energy always changing, just like this whole universe. It was created at one point, and it will be destroyed at another point, and every object within this world is deteriorating and changing constantly. 
So in the same way, in the spiritual, in the spiritual world, every object there is never changing. It is neither created nor destroyed, it is eternal. So that superior energy, that potency is existing in the eternal transcendental world, and then between the material world and the spiritual world is what is called the uh, Tatasta Shakti, the Jiva Shakti, the living entity. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that just like when you have the bank of a river, there is the water flowing in the river, then there is the land next to the water. But in between, there is the bank. It is called Tata. Tata means the margin area between the water and the land. Sometimes it is covered by water, sometimes it is uh, not covered. So all jivas within this material world, we are called Tatasta Shakti Potency, the marginal energy of the Supreme Lord. We can either be here in this inferior energy covered by these physical material bodies and, and uh, subtle bodies, or we can attain our eternal position in the spiritual world because Krishna says in Gita that we are his superior potency. We are of that transcendental substance which is eternal. So every living entity is Nitya Krishna Das, eternal servant of Krishna. But they have forgotten this. Because the Jiva soul has turned his face. Krishna Buli Se Jeev Anadi Bahir Muk Atayeva Maya Tari Deya Samsar Duk. Here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that when the Jiva soul forgets Krishna, oh. he forgets. Thank you. Yo. So to explain what is Tatastha Shakti and how he came. He came from Golok Vrindavan or from where? Hmm? All these things. One thing, Sanatana Goswami, oh here. <coughs> Sanatana Goswami asked, Ke Ami. Then second thing, Kere Jare Tapatraya. Yaha Nahi Jani. And third, Three things. Means, first is Sambandha, second is Vidhe, and third is Prayoyan Tattva. So he is asking, Ke Ami, who am I? Is this body or inside anything? So this is called Sambandha Gyan. What is the relation between us and Krishna? And then Kemane Hitaha Yaha Nahi Jani. Without Bhakti, we cannot know. So here Bhakti. Bhakti, Vaidhi Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti, and then oh, so many things. In this it will come Sthai Bhav, Anubhav, Vyabhichari, and all other things. And then, third, Kemnahitha. Without Prem, you cannot have that Sukh. So this is Prayojanta. He asked by these three things. Kemnahitha is two times. Two times. Kemnahitha is two times. Kemnahitha is two times. Kemane Hithai means without bhakti cannot be achieved. Krishna Prem. So sadhan, that is Avidhe, is Krishna Bhakti. This is question. Then, here question is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Jvera Sarupahe Nitya Krishna Das. And after that, at once he told, Nitya Das, but Krishna Tatastha Sakti. What is Tatastha Sakti? How a Chetan Jeev, the ans of Krishna, he was involved in Maya. How it became? This is the question. You should clear all these things.
राधिकाय तराले कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद भक्ताय नमो नम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आर फॉर बाइस लोरसिरो श्री गुरुदेव टू डी सन्यासी वैष्णव वैष्णव इज सो गुरुदेव हैज गिवन मी इंस्ट्रक्शन टू ट्राई टू हेल्प अस टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हेन जीवा इज कमिंग फ्रॉम एंड व्हाट इज तथास्तु शक्ति Well, this is a very important point because unless we understand where we come from, then there'll always be confusion who we are. If we don't know who we are, then how we can adopt the process to achieve our ultimate goal? Therefore, Buddha was saying, "Sambandha Bhagavanam Abhidaya Bhakti Bhavai Krishna Prema Priyajan Veda Chhi Tatva Koi." हरिबो संबंध अभिदा संबंध भगवान अभिदेय भक्ति होय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रयोजन वेद थ्री तत्व कोय स्नातन को स्वामी आस थ्री क्वेश्चंस रिलेटिंग टू संबंध ज्ञान व्हाट इज आवर संबंध व्हाट इज आवर रिलेशनशिप व्हाट इज एवरीथिंग्स रिलेशनशिप व्हाट इज द सेंटर व्हेयर डज इट कम फ्रॉम व्हाट इज द कॉमन थ्रेड रनिंग थ्रू एवरीथिंग दैट इज भगवान अभिदेय व्हाट आर माय एक्टिविटीज इन दैट रिलेशनशिप bhakti and what is our goal prema they were answer to the first question of sri sanatan goswami kya me who am i the chaitanya mahaprabhu immediately replied jeevera sarupa hoy krishna ra nitya das tathasta shakti ar beda bed prakash so first we should understand the soul is an eternal servant of krishna nitya das it's not that my service to krishna be- began on a certain date no the potency to serve krishna that is eternally intrinsically part of the jiva it cannot be separated like heat cannot be separated from fire the potency to render loving service to krishna can never be separated from the jiva therefore it's called his swarup his own form his own true self what is that he is an eternal servant of sri krishna and where does he come from tatasta shaktiyad beda bed prakash now sri guru ji asked some people say where do we come from do we come from goloka vrindavan are we a product of maya no we are a product of krishna's energy because it called, has been written that tanitta das tanitta das how he can be he can be only in goloka vrindavan so it seems that oh krishna that person has forgotten and they are it quest uh, like so many think like that uh, but this is one type of craziness because in the spiritual world there's only chit shakti there and chaitanya mahaprabhu said there are three types of energy vishnu shakti tatha para there's the para shakti there's the jeev shakti and there's the maya shakti so in goloka vrindavan there's no such thing as maya or jeev shakti there there is only antaranga shakti or chit shakti therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu never said the jeeva is chit shakti he said that we are a different type of energy called tatasta shakti another point is especially advaita vadis they think there's no difference between the jiva and bhagwan they think bhagwan has manifested himself as the jiva they think they have the philosophy of eko jiva vad there's only one jiva and that is the supreme lord but in due to the influence of illusion that bhagwan that brahma has considered himself to be a jiva therefore this is also another type of madness therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu said the jiva he is not a manifestation of this material world he is not manifested from maya he is not manifested from the supreme lord I and mean, he is not the supreme lord in fact he is a completely different transformation of energy of the supreme lord the supreme lord himself does not lose himself to transform into this world or to the jivas they were mapu by establishing this sh- this tatva in the beginning of his teachings he taught the philosophy of shakti parinam vad the jiva is a transformation of bhagwan's shakti which shakti put put your part padmanam as described there are three shaktis of vishnu chit shakti maya shakti but we are not transformations of them therefore mapu said tatasta shakti ad bedabed prakash so sri 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his explanation in Jaiva Dharma, he explains, because we're using material language to describe something which is completely inconceivable, there may be some fault. Therefore, in my language, of course, because we're using material terms, but try to understand the main point. Bhagwan has three shaktis, and this shakti we're talking about now is called Tatastha Shakti or Jiva Shakti. It is completely distinct from the Pada Shakti or Maya Shakti. That Jiva Shakti is the Shakti, a transformation of which manifests us or the individual souls. We are not Swamksa or Krishna's direct expansions. We are the Jiva is called Vibhanam Satattva or separated parts and parcels. Therefore, the word has been used Jiva Shakti or Tatastha Shakti. The Jiva Shakti is a part of the Chit Shakti, and Maya Shakti is a shadow of the Chit Shakti. So what is the meaning of Tatasta? Tata means bank, like Maharaj explained. The bank of a river, it's not land, and it's not completely water. It's a marginal position in between both. Therefore, the, ta the Jiva, he comes from Tatasta Shakti, and also his nature is Tatasta Shakti. Because we are called the marginal potency, the jiva has a tendency to go towards the service of Bhagawan, the Surup Shakti, taking shot of the Surup Shakti, he serves Sri Krishna, or he has a choice to take shelter of Maya Shakti, and then he serves the material energy. But the jiva can never be independent. Either the jiva will serve under the guidance of Surup Shakti, Yoga Maya, or else he will be captured by the illusory potency. There was an explanation is given, the jiva is a bit like a fish, a fl you know a flounder, he has eyes on top of his head. He can see both things. Therefore the jiva, he has, he has no experience, because this jiva, this tatastha shakti is in a neutral position. Because it's not the chit shakti, it's not maya shakti, therefore the influence of the three modes of nature are not working there, there's no sattva rajatama. Also there's no surup shakti there, therefore the jiva, because he's independent, he can see both things. But he, can't have, he doesn't have experience of it. It's like seeing a cupcake on an, in a glass you know, counter. You can see it, but what it is you can't taste. Therefore the jiva has no experience in that condition that serving Krishna is ecstasy and coming towards Maya is suffering. But he has an independent choice because Bhagavan has given a jewel to each jiva that is the jewel of independence, Swatantrata. Because without independence, there's no question of free love. There's no slave gangs in Goloka Vrindavan. Everyone there is rendering loving and voluntary service to Sri Krishna. There, without this jewel of independence, there's no question of love. There, but the jiva, he has this tendency to go towards Krishna or to go towards Maya. Therefore, Krishna bully say jiva, anadi bayarmuk ataiva maya taradeya samsari duk. When, if the jiva, by misuse of his independence, sorry, turns towards Maya, then immediately he's captured by the Maya, and she gives him covering, 24 coverings. First she covers him by chit, then ahanka, false ego, then in buddhi, intelligence, ma, man, mind, then the gross body made of earth, water, fire, air, ether, then come the karmindya of seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, gyanindya, touch, then the karmindya of Mo mechanic, uh, motiva moving of the hands and legs, digestion, speech, the genitals, rect and rectum. Therefore, the jiva, if he wants to enjoy separately from Krishna, he turns towards Maya. Immediately, Maya covers him with these 24 coverings. He rotates for the 8,400,000 species of life trying to enjoy. And if by the mercy of Guru and Shastri he can understand his original position, then he can rectify himself by the process of bhajan, kori guru sevana kori. Krishna Bhajana, Maya Jali Chuti Pai Sri Krishna Charana. By performing Guru Seva and performing Bhajan of Krishna, the Jiva leaves Maya and comes back to the service of Bhagawan. But there is a chance that some Jivas in the Tatasta region, because of good use of independence, they may directly turn towards Krishna directly. Why? Because they have independent choice. It's Srila Gogavan Maharaj said, because the Jiva is weak, there is no Surup Shakti. 99% of jivas come to Maya, like we did. Thank you. A little bit. So the jiva, then if he turns towards Krishna, immediately Surup Shakti comes and empowers him, gives him chitval, spiritual strength, and according to his Surup, am I a servant of Ram? Am I a servant of 
Parasaram, I'm a servant of Narayan, I'm a servant of Matsya or Kurma, or I'm a servant of Dwokadish Krishna, I'm a servant of Brajananandana Krishna, in Sakya Dasya, Bhatsalya, whatever I am, that potency that Krishna has given me, inherent within the Jeev, Suruk Shakti empowers that, and he goes directly to Goloka Vrindavan and serves there. Therefore, conclusion is, we never came from Goloka Vrindavan because there is no Tatastha Shakti, there is no Tatastha Shakti there, there is no Maya Shakti there, therefore how the Jiva can fall from there, there is no Maya, there is no Tatastha there. Therefore, we did not come from Goloka Vrindavan. I just want to add one little thing. When Srila Swami when Srila Swami Srila Prabhupada, he went back to Vrindavan, then his godbrother, Sri Obiel Kapoor, he asked him, Oh Maharaj, you are saying the Jiva fell from Goloka Vrindavan, why are you saying this? This is completely incorrect. According to the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Asura Prabhupada said, Yeah, I know, but Mayavad is so thick there, you cannot understand. Unless the Jeev, unless they hear they're an eternal servant of Krishna there, they will not start the process of bhajan. Deva Srila Gogama said that Prabhupada is a little bit like Buddha. He said anything just to sort of catch people and bring them in. They were, in a very easy way to make it easy for us to understand that we're eternal servants of Krishna, he explained it like that. Go yeah. Premanand. <laughs> Clarify more what is Tatasa Sakti and how Jiva came here in this world. Oh, Magyan. But not so long. <laughs> oh, Magyan of Timirandasya, Gyanan Jana Salakaya, Chaksurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guravinama. First, I offer my unlimited obeisances. In the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Diksha Gurudev, Nijalila Pravishta Om Vishnupad, Astotra Satiti Srimad, Chilabhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances, in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shiksha Gurudev, Om Vishnupad, Astotra Satiti Srimad, Chilabhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our disciplic succession and all the assembled devotees. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak further about the meaning of Tatastha Shakti and how we did not fall from Goloka Vrindavan. Sri Padamadar Maharaj explains so nicely and I'll try to take some remnants. Srila Gurudev said that it's very important to understand that the Jiva did not fall from Goloka Vrindavan and that there is no Maya in Goloka Vrindavan, because it's by Maya that makes us fall, the influence of Maya. Because without knowing this, we won't have faith to take to Sadhana Bhakti to go to the goal of Goloka Vrindavan. Therefore, it's essential to understand that there's no Maya there. As it's stated in the first canto Srimad Bhagavatam, in the last line, first verse, first chapter. Dhamna svena sada nerasta kuha kam sat yam param dimahi. Shulavyasdev is saying that I worship that Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally living in his own abode, which is forever free from illusion. Shula Krishna Kavaraj Goswami explains that there are two kinds of living entities in this Sanatan Shiksha. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining to Sanatan Goswami there are two kinds of living entities. One is the Nitya, Nitya Mukta Jiva and one is the Nitya Bada Jiva. The Nitya Mukta Jiva is manifest by Baladev Prabhu in Vrindavan and he may take part in any of the services to Krishna in Vrindavan. Also, Baladev's expansion of Mul Sankarshan in Dwarka, Matra, Maha Sankarshan in Vaikuntha, they manifest these various Nitya Mukta Jivas who are eternally engaged in the service of Maturej, Dwarkadish, or Vaikuntanath, Lord Narayan and they have no idea what is maya. They have never experienced what is maya. Then there's the Nitya Bada Jeev, or more specifically, the Anadi Bada, Bada Jeev, 
That is, it's not that that conditioned soul has been conditioned forever, but from a time immemorial, a time that is so long that it cannot be calculated. This uh, Nadir Badajiv manifests from the Tatasta Shakti, and from that point, Tatasta, Tata means shore. So the shore is the very, very fine line, very infinitesimal line between the water, say the ocean, and the beach. Sometimes that line is covered by the water, and sometimes it's in the open land. So that Tatasta Shakti Jeev, that Anadir Bada Jeev, is located in the Tatasta region. The Jiva is not a manifestation, as Maharaj mentioned, of Swarup Shakti. He's a manifestation of Tatasta Shakti, which is a manifestation of Swarup Shakti. From Swarup Shakti comes the Swansa manifestations like Narayan, Korma, um, Lord Nishringadev, Matya, and the Vivinak Sajiv comes from this Tatasta Shakti. From that point, if the Jiva sh the, the Tatasta Shakti Jeev looks towards Govindavan, then Yoga Maya immediately transfers that Jiva to Goloka to engage eternally in the Lord's service. If that Jiva looks towards the material energy, then say Buli. Krishna Bhuli Say Jiva Nadir Bahimuk turns away, Bahimuk turns away from Krishna, then Maya immediately grabs him, covers him over, and gives him the three fold miseries. So the Tatasta area is where Karna Dakshai Vishnu resides. And this is explained by Shila Bhaktivinoda um, Thakur in his Jaiva Dharma. He explains how Baladev or Mulsakankarshan or Mahasankarshan manifest the jivas in Vrindavan, Dwarka, Mathura, or Vaikuntha. And from Karana Dakshai Vishnu, who is located in that causal ocean or in that Viraja river, that area in between the material and spiritual world, that Tata, that jiva manifests and can look one way or another. Srila Gurudev gives the example of a blade, a sword, very sharp end, edge of a sword. And if suppose you throw mustard seeds on that edge of the sword, some of those mustard seeds will go one way and some of the mustard seeds will go another way. So Karanadakshai Vishnu gives that jiva a moment of choice by emanating from his glands, from his forehead, the light coming from his forehead, he tells the jiva, I'm giving you now some light so that you can have intelligence to think about it for a moment. So when that jiva, those jivas who turn away from the Lord, they are immediately captured by the illusory energy. So tatta means that shoreline between matter and spirit, and from that line, he can choose Krishna. Anyone who's already engaged in Krishna's service, parang dristva nivartante, by experiencing the higher taste, he's completely free from the lower taste, so there's never any chance for him to fall from Goloka Vrindavan. And knowing this, by the mercy of Gurudev and our Guru Varga, we have faith to take to Sadhan Bhakti, to go back to home, back to Godhead. Explain well. First of all, we should know who are jivas. Mamai vanso, jiv loke, jiv bhuta. It seems that they have their part and parcel of Krishna. What Sila Jiva Swami has told in his Paramatma Sandarbha. Really, Krishna is Sat Chit Ananda, Sambit Sandhini Lagni, with all. But for to play 
past time. He removed all his Shakti and only kept Tatastha Shakti. Only. What is Tatastha Shakti? It may be called that Jivas has a transformation of that Shakti. So, Jivas are only part of Krishna when Krishna is with only Tatastha Shakti. So, this is the difference between other Vaishnava Sampradaya and our. They tell that Jivas are part and parcel of Krishna, but we don't. Parinam, Shakti Parinam. They are Vastu Parinam and we are Shakti Parinam. This is the difference between other Vaishnava Sampradayan and our Rash. So Krishna, uh, Jivas has come from Krishna, but a transformation of Malik, when Krishna is along with Tatastha Shakti, then Jiva comes. Is Krishna with Tatastha Shakti, that is Jivas? Tatastha Shakti, Shakti, like Jeeva's um, Maya Shakti, Chit Shakti, so this Tatastha Shakti, wheat, and then it comes. As she told, Srila um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur in Jayu Dharma has told, from Baldev, so many numberless Nidya Siddha. I don't, don't, don't. Take out. Take out. Uh, what I'm they sat in Golok Vrindavan, Krishna, and in Vaikuntha, Shankarshan, he manifests so many Nitya Siddha Jivas who are serving Narayan, Sri Ramchandar, Nishingha, Baman, Kalki, all others. And after this, from Karnadzai Vishnu, oh, all the jivas coming from him, who are now Baddha, from him, how coming? Like the rays of sun, particles, huh? particles. They have all the qualities which in Golo and Vaikunt Jivas Nitya Siddha have. All qualities there. But they are very infinite. Minute. Minute. So they are very weak, very weak. And in the side, oh, Maya is there. This side. And this side, Yogamaya is there. So, as he told, on a sword or blade, if he will fell, anyhow you will fell in the middle, but they must go here and there. So, by chance, the jivas, having all quality but in very minute, they are bound to see here and there. If by chance they saw towards Maya, at once Maya without delay see. And covered with shuttle body and growth body. And he forgot everything now. So, we should know first. The jiva are part and parcel of Krishna, it is right. But 
all the jivas we are in this world are from karnat disai vishnu and for anadi nitta uh, nit like shaitanya chaitamit it has been told Uh, so here nitya means not eternal but anadi memorial they are now here and those who look towards yog maya that is vaikuntha at once maya, yog maya attracted them and engaged in oh krishna krishna anyha so jivas has not come from golok vrinda i they say when i was coming uh, when i was in india the leaders of the scon they told me we want you to take in western country but two condition you cannot tell that jivas has come from golok eh tatasta you will have to tell and secondly secondly one thing more no rasa no anything else i don't remember i deny it i deny it i don't want oh oh one thing more they told that you should not tell that uh, shila prabhupad has uh, path sarathi path sarathi there uh, rukmani bah path sarathi they had so, i told i must tell that he has not named he has not named then i then this is jeeva tattva but he has told two examples sujan sakirana jano agni jala chat what meaning sujan and agni jala two things oma gyana chimana ghasha ज्ञानंदन श्लाख्या चक्षूर्मल तंजे नव तस्म श्री गुरवे नम ओ वन थिंग मोर यू शुड आल्सो एक्सप्लेन हेदा फेद प्रकाश भाई ही हैज टोल्ड एंड देन दिस पॉइंट सो जान सके जा सो सिलर सुनातन गोस्वामी पार्ट इज पोज द क्वेश्चन हु एम आई and in reply shri chetan mahapu he said ji where swarup hoy krishna and nitya das the vaishnavas have discussed and explained this now we come to the next line krishna ra tathasta shakti baira bhay prakash that the living entity is the prakash that means a manifestation of shri krishna's marginal potency tathasta shakti but this manifestation is being called Bhed abhed prakash. He is one with and also different from hmm, Sri Krishna. In what sense? In the sense that every first of all, it's described <coughs> by Sri Lajiva Goswami part that if two things have the same origin hmm, and they are also not independent of their origin, then they cannot be considered to be entirely different. So similarly the living entity he has his origin from the energy of Shri Krishna and in that sense he is not different from Shri Krishna he is always under the control of Shri Krishna because whether he is in the material world being controlled by the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas or whether he is in the spiritual world being inspired by yoga maya in every state he is never independent at any time he has no independent existence but at the same time that living entity who is a part a manifestation of krishna's energy who is never independent from shri krishna and therefore can be considered to be one with krishna at the same time he is not krishna 
He's, he's very minute. Now, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wants to expand and give an example, a very simple example, a simple analogy by which we can understand how the living entity is bade and abed, one with and different from Sri Krishna. So he said, Suryangsu Kiran Jaiche Agni Jalachai. The first example Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, gave, is that... Why is bhed a bhed? What is the reason? What is the means of bhed and a bhed? He is Krishna and not Krishna. He is equal to Krishna in one sense and another sense he is not. How? So, now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that bhed a bhed. Suryansu Kiran Jaiche. From the sun emanate millions of tiny particles, tiny photons. So just as the sun is effulgent, just as the sun is the source of heat and light, so those tiny photons are also effulgent, they're a source of heat and light. But there's a very big difference. The when there will be no sun seen, oh, they in darkness once they will be, they will not be seen. So they will be like what? These things. Mm -hmm. Understand? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the particle of the sun has the qualities of the sun, but in a very, very minute quantity. The sun is the origin of all the photons. The photons are not the origin of the sun. So in this way, we can also say that the sun, whenever you see the sun, you see the light of the sun also. They will not, the sunlight is never independent of the sun. So in this way, the living entities are like rays, they are like the particles in the rays of the sun. And now, Agni Jwala. Mm, Chaitanya Mahapu, when he gave this example, he was not entirely satisfied. And there's a reason, and that is that in this example, even though the analogy explains many things to do with the living entity and the, and, and the Supreme Lord, there are some things that does not explain. So he gave the example, he said, Agni Jalachai. The living entity is like the spark of a fire. The spark and the fire are of the same quality, but different quantity, again, like in the first example. But if a spark will jump out from the fire and land in a place like stone, then what will happen? Its qualities become extinguished. So the living entity who goes into Maya Though by nature he is spiritual, though he is eternal, though he is Satchidananda, just like Bhagavan is, he becomes completely unconscious of his own nature. But if a spark jumps out from a fire and lands in, say, a haystack, right, then what will happen? The dharma of the spark is to burn. But if that, if that spark is in the right atmosphere, Though the living entity himself is very tiny, his dharma, that, sorry, though the spark itself is very tiny, its dharma, which is to burn, can become so powerful, just like the original fire from which that spark came. So in the same way, it will burn the whole jungle and everything. <laughs> so, in the same way, if a living entity will be in the very conducive atmosphere, that is, he will get the shelter of Swarup Shakti, he will engage in Bhakti, then what will happen? The Dharma of the Jiva, which is Prem, will expand so rapidly and become so powerful, so huge, that even Bhagavan himself will come under the control of the Prem Dharma of that living entity. Hmm? And, and therefore, Though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the example of the sun and the photon, he was not fully satisfied and gave the example of the spark. Because by this example, it shows that the tiny living entity has the potential, taking shelter of Prema Bhakti, to even control the heart of the Supreme Lord. Very good discussion. And you should remember all these things. Mm. Then, what? Is it true that most of the jivas, the tattva jivas, fall down 
into the material world and only a very few go to the local It cannot be so. Who will look towards Maya, they will come. And those who will see there, that is I'm telling. How it can be told that, oh, many of the, they come and less they are going. How we can tell? No, you cannot tell. No, no. By chance, they can go there. They have quality that. All the qualities of Sikh Dajim they have. <laughs> Some of the speakers said the jivas have a choice, but when you gave the example of the the mustard seeds on the blade, you said it was by chance. Yes, by chance. Well, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has told everything is like chance. So, so they should you follow. Say we the it is vichitra. <laughs> In, in Chaitanya Chaitamrit, it has been told, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has been told, Jagadananda, Jagadananda, Prem Vivarth Sune Jaijan. Prema Swarup Gyan Paet Prema Dhan. So, I think if Krishna Das Kaviraj has told in Chaitanya Charitamrit that Jagadananda has made a book Prem Vibhat, then it is authentic from Jagadananda. So, no doubt. We have no doubt that this book is written by Jagadananda. <coughs> Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Oh, Jagadanande Premvibhat Seju Yan Premara Sarup Jane Pai Premadhan. He has glorified so much. If he, anyone will hear Premvibhat, oh, easily he can have Prem, but he will have to follow then. Otherwise, he is hearing and uh, oh, nothing will happen. He must follow, totally follow them. Krishna Prem. He will know the Swarup of Prem and he will have Krishna Prem. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his Prem, in his Bhakti Vinod Thakur has in Amrit Pravah. He had commentary of these hmm? that Jagadananda Prabhu Charitra Je Aprakit Viprem Prem Vibhat Nama Granthe Likhi Ache. Taha. He has written that Jagadananda has made a Prem Vibhat book. And Prema, Prem, Premananda Brahmachari. First, Prem Das Brahmachari. Devadharma. Oh, he used to read this book and explain and weep and weep. So, this book is very, very high class of book. In Gaurgona Desika, Des Deepika, Kavi Karnapur has written that anyhow, Jagadananda Prabhu is Shakta Bhama. But then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Vibhin Rasagya, so many. Rastatva Gyata Tara Polishen Uri Rabasalya Mukha Uri means Parmananda Puri and Ramananda Suddha Sakha 
আর গোবিন্দের শুদ্ধ দাস গোবিন্দ মহাপ্রভু সার্ভেন শুদ্ধ দাস গদাধ জগদানন্দ স্বরূপের মুখ্য রামানন্দ অর্থাৎ ফোর গদাধর পণ্ডিত জগদানন্দ পণ্ডিত স্বরূপ দামোদর এন্ড রামানন্দ দে হ্যাভ ফোর মধুর রস ভক্তি বিনোদ ঠাকুর in this book jagadanand himself written that i want to serve radhika and mahaprabhu wants to push me to dwarka i cannot go anyhow if he will it means what he is like a very near and dear gopi hmm? of shrimati radhika so he is not satyabhama but in any way rukmini um, mahaprabhu told gadadhari is rukmini rukmini bhav and, and he jagadanand bhav 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 so <coughs> only for this mahaprabhu sometimes he has told oh she is like but then wa putti jani bhi karan bhi so jagadanand prabhu has written this book and i want to read you give class by explanation so that you should follow these his instructions and be pure bhakta go premanand ani kirsa Hare Krishna so just Rudev has started his class today and day after tomorrow Sunday is Annakut Maha Mahotsav so after weekend some devotee want to leave due to their some business and job some devotee has requested for initiation so we are thinking to do initiation Monday but some devotee has requested somebody told just now they leave mon uh, sunday night so initially tomorrow morning who is leaving sunday and they have to be register their name with us must be must be recommended by the senior devotee because who live close to you must be recommended by the senior devotee that you are qualified for any initiation you are following for regular principle or not and who wants second initiation they are chanting sixty now or not we don't know so you must be recommended by any senior devotee so initiation will take place tomorrow 9 am initiation will take place tomorrow 9 am so whoever want initiation for male devotee have to shave your hair and clean cloth have to come tomorrow 9 am hare krishna hare krishna one more announcement all the devotees i know you all want to have darshan private darshan personal darshan with shri guru dev uh, we are uh, sorry that